Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. You know, I work on van and RV power systems and I often get asked whether people should solder their connections. And today we're gonna take a little micro look at that topic and we're gonna analyze these solder seal connectors versus regular heat shrink butt splices. So the regular heat shrink butt splices are just going to clamp down on the two wires to make that splice. And the solder seal is actually gonna be melted and the solder is going to melt into the strands of the wire. And what I'd like to do is check the resistance of these two wires. We've got a 30 amp charger here, which I have turned down to 15 amps. And uh, we're gonna do a voltage drop calculation and take that and uh, using Ohm's law, we're going to find the resistance in the wires as they are now. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna add the butt splice over here and the solder seal over here. And we're gonna take an after measurement and see how the resistance changes and uh, whether the solder seal is in fact more efficient and more conductive than a regular butt splice. So uh, stay tuned, this is bound to be a, an interesting episode. First things first, what we need to do is go ahead and turn on our charger. So I'm going to plug that in here. And I do have a BMV 712 from Victron. That's our battery monitor. So that's going to give us our current reading. And uh, it looks like it's kicked up to 14.91 amps right off the bat. Now what I'd like to do with my big obnoxious signs here is go ahead and take the voltage reading for both wires. So we have positive and negative. And I've got a little bit of naked wire peeking out on both ends so I can get a voltage drop. So we are at 75 millivolts, 0.075 volts. And for the negative, the wire is the same length. It should be very close, 0.077 volts. Okay, so we'll start with 0.075. I go to my trusty calculator. 0.075 divided by our current, which is 14.92, uh, I believe it was. It may have edged up a little bit. 14.9695. Okay, we'll say 14.95. All right, we are at 0.005 ohms of resistance in the red wire. It's gonna be uh, 5.01 milliohms. So we'll go ahead with uh, Ohm's law. We're using amps and ohms and, um, what is the other one? Amps, <laughs> ohms, and volts. Um, not not milliohms, not millivolts. Um, you have to use the full measurement, the full unit, but when we come here, I'm gonna switch it to um, milliohms. So we're at 5.01, 5.02 milliohms, 0.02, and uh, I'm not gonna put the unit, that's milliohms, 5.02. I haven't won any awards from my handwriting, but uh, what we're gonna do now is uh, let's take the reading of the yellow, the negative side. 0 0.07778, it's vacillating, 0 0.077. Okay, come in here, 0 0.077. Let's take a new look at the current, should be right under 15 amps, 14.95. Divided by 14.95, 5.15 milliohms. All right, that's our before, 5.15. So they should be exact for a little, for some reason they're not the exact but uh, as you can see, they're pretty close. That is in milliohms, so we're measuring a tiny amount of resistance. Um, but that gives us a starting point on both sides. So now when we add the different splices, we're, we can see where we end up. So what I'm going to do is uh, zoom in. I'm going to add the regular butt splice to the positive, the solder seal connector to the negative, 
and we'll retake those measurements. But before we do that, I wanted to tell you about a document that you may be interested in. If you're working on a van or RV power system, I have a resource called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet, and it's got a discussion of the three major charging sources that you're gonna need in a van or RV, which are solar, shore, or alternator power. It's gonna talk about how each of those has strengths, but they also have weaknesses. But when you bring them together in a holistic power strategy, it's gonna make sure you have a good charge source no matter where you go out on the road. So if you're out in the desert boondocking or you're plugged in at a campground, you're not gonna worry about running out of power. There's also a discussion on different battery chemistries and the strengths and weaknesses of those. It's gonna help you narrow in on which battery type is gonna be right for you. And then lastly, there is a really cool diagram that has those three major charging sources at the top and it's gonna show how that circuitry is laid out and how that power makes its way through charges your batteries and then comes out at your end devices such as your laptop or your microwave. For instance, how does the alternator power make its way through and come out and charge your cell phone? So it's a really cool diagram that I think you'll find useful. That diagram is a part of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. To get your own copy, all you have to do is click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna add our splices and uh, we're going to take some new measurements and see which one is the winner. All right, so on this side, we're going to do the regular butt splice. Now, I did cut off the charger. You want to do that beforehand. Make sure we have plenty of wire getting into that butt splice connector. We've got a long ham handled crimper here to make sure that we get a good crimp. All right, good to go. Give it the pull test and the butt splice is ready to go. Come over to the negative. On this one, I'm gonna come back about three eighths of an inch. And what we're gonna do, instead of crimping this one, we're going to actually thread both ends into the solder seal connector and they want you to kind of join the strands together to some degree and uh, I'm going to grab my torch here let's see here so you can use a, a heat gun or you can use a butane torch like I have And I may have to detach the wire so I can heat it all the way around, but uh, let's just get it going here. You can get the ends to kind of shrink up really quickly and grab the wire so it doesn't pull apart. And our main goal is going to be to liquefy the solder. So I can see that I've actually already done that. And you'll see kind of a liquid silver pass over the strands of the wire and you know that the solder has melted. All right, we're gonna let that cool. And uh, the solder has kind of coated everything inside that connection. All right, so we're ready to take our final measurements. I have kicked on the charger and let it run for a few minutes. I also did a little bit more with the solder seal connector. After I turned the camera off, I raised it a little bit more to make sure that solder was uh, in there and had a good connection and then um, I let it cool down for a little bit so that the, uh, the resistance wasn't artificially high because if the wires are hot, they are going to be, uh, have a higher resistance. So I wanted to give it a fair shake and I let it cool down and then both of them have been running with uh, 15 amps through them for a couple of minutes. So let's take some new readings and uh, see what we have on the positive. We're going to get that voltage drop, 0.076 volts and 14.92 uh, amps. 0.076 divided by 14.92 amps, and that's going to spit out our ohms of resistance. 5.09 ohms. 
Okay. 5.09, we'll, we'll just leave it at 5.09, keep it simple. Um, all right, so on this side, so you can see the resistance went up, that's uh, 5.09 milliohms. So it's, it's very minimal. Let's see what we have on this side. Voltage drop is 0.076, same deal. And uh, let's grab our current real quick. Our current running through there at this exact moment, 1492. Uh, 0.077, 76, 77, 76. I'm going to let it stabilize, 7776. At this point, let me, it's vacillating between them, so we'll do uh, 0.0765 divided by 14.9. 0.0765. Divided by 14.9 amps. 513 milliohms. All right, so 5.13 milliohms. All right, so in conclusion, as you can see here, I have changed my number a little bit. I went ahead and ran that calculation again. Uh, the current is starting to dip as the battery is almost full, but um, took another voltage reading and another current reading for the yellow wire, and uh, we have 5.17 milliohms up from 5.15 when it was just a straight wire. Um, so I would say there's really no difference as far as the conductivity. Uh, I don't think that either one of these is necessarily superior. The uh, solder seal may be stronger from a structural standpoint because you have the strands together and then you have all of the wires bonded with that solder. Uh, frankly, it becomes so pliable and loose when you heat it up. Um, I'm not necessarily sold on it. I do kind of like the regular heat shrink butt splices. They're very rigid. And then by the time you heat shrink them, uh, you also have that increased tensile strength over a regular butt splice. So not a hard conclusion on this experiment. Uh, sometimes that happens. I'm glad that we took a look. Hopefully you got something out of this experiment as well. That's my video. And uh, again, if you want more information on your van or RV electrical system, you got to grab a copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. Just click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.